This memorial stands in recognition of the service and sacrifice of the Pacific peoples who supported New Zealand in the First and Second World Wars and in subsequent conflicts around the world. It also stands as a symbol of Aotearoa New Zealand's special bond and enduring friendship with our Pacific neighbours. Te reo hotunui o te moana nui a kiwa, the deep sigh of the Pacific. The Pacific Islands Memorial was officially unveiled on March 27, 2021 at Pukeahu National War Memorial Park in Wellington, New Zealand by Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern. The conch design by Pacific artist Michael Tuffery and Harriet Mellish and O'Neill Architects depicts a bronze conch shell, a symbol deeply rooted in Pacific cultures. The memorial represents New Zealand's enduring friendship with the Pacific Islands. And so I wish to acknowledge those here and in the Pacific whose families grew up with such loss, whose loved ones lie in foreign soil, in cemeteries of Europe and North Africa and here in Aotearoa. poet wrote in his tribute, you traveled across a watching world to show how heroes die. The Pacific's contribution to New Zealand's war efforts first began in World War I. Niue and the Cook Islands answered New Zealand's plea for men to join their war efforts in Europe. In 1915, 150 Niuean men sailed from their tropical homeland to Auckland. I don't believe the, the 150 poor souls know what they put themselves in when they left Niue in 1915, in October. Coming from a different environment to another, which is far, far different than what they experienced in Niue. They did their training at Narrow Neck before being sent to France to help dig trenches in freezing conditions. It wasn't easy for the islanders, with over 80% of them being hospitalised. Eventually, they were sent home. The first of the 500 Cook Island soldiers also arrived in New Zealand in 1915 with the Rarotonga contingent. Another arrived in 1916. The fifth contingent, however, never left New Zealand. I believe at the time felt that they were also, you know, part of this effort that New Zealand has um, undertaken to be to, to, to join the Allies um, in, during these, these past two wars. So they wanted to be part of it. What I was taught back in school was that our people actually asked. And we saw, of course, the enlisting of, of men from the Cook Islands um, initially into the Māori Battalion. Private Frank William Tararo was part of the first batch of Cook Islanders to enlist in the war in 1915. He was just 17 years old at the time. There were a number of grand uncles who enlisted um, in, in the war, and um, I think I've got six grand uncles who also enlisted, and these are my mum's, on my mum's side. One of them, Vavia Williams, was the one that was actually killed. Um, beside my grandfather. I've also read through some of the historical documents in terms of just the attire. So, you know, the, just not being comfortable, not being comfortable in shoes, um, not being equipped for the, for the cold, um, whether that they were coming into, both in New Zealand, but also in, you know, in, on the Western Front as well. Tararo was the only soldier from Maoke to survive the war and return back home to his ipukarea. It was very rare for soldiers to share any of their experiences of the war openly with family, as it was too painful. Most couldn't read or write English, except for Corporal Tuaivi Mose. My grandfather, I believe, is the only Cook Islander that I'm aware of that have actually written uh, his war experiences. I'm not aware of any other Cook Islander who actually wrote the experiences. 
The Psalm Offensive 1916. Early in the morning, I woke up and went outside to see where the bomb landed. Oh Lord, I was surprised to see a dead Māori alongside the barbed wire near the road. He belonged to the Māori platoon. He was caught in the wire as he tried to escape the bomb. I did not inquire about the number of casualties of the bombing, but I knew it was heavy. One particular story that was passed down through the family was from the battlefields of World War I, where Tua Iwi Mose helped to save a fellow Cook Island soldier, Raitia Tepuretu. After the shell fire, Raitia got buried underneath, and my grandfather was one of the people that had helped him out of the, the hole. Yeah. Wow. And I know Raitia survived the war as well. This is my grandfather, Flight Lieutenant Andrew Cromfeld. So he uh, he was Samoan, and he's my mum's dad. He served in the Royal Air Force in what was then called 485 Brackets New Zealand Squadron. And this uh, this photo shows him flying the one Spitfire that Samoa donated to the war effort, and it was called Western Samoa. The Pacific's contribution to World War II saw recruits enlisting from across the region. Many Pacific soldiers also served in the Māori Battalion. Exactly how many Pacific Island soldiers served in the war is unknown, as the New Zealand Armed Forces only have recorded data of soldiers that were hospitalised. The 485 Squadron, which Flight Lieutenant Andrew Cronfeld was a part of, flew Supermarine Spitfires throughout the war, and story has it that he shot down a German plane in the Battle of Britain. My grandmother, she uh, she always talked about that, but we, we always say we need to find out how many planes he did shoot down. But the story about the German plane was because his name was Kronfeld and he was German Samoan. We're really proud of his service, but there's little snippets here and there. And the story is that he flew in the Battle of Britain, but he's not listed um, in the RNZAF for the Battle of Britain because he flew in the composite squadron. So yeah, we're, we're still digging. It's a real shame I didn't get to meet him. I, I was seven when he died and I never got to meet him, so uh, yeah. Pacific people served under the New Zealand flag in both world wars in foreign lands many miles from home and the life they knew. Many also served on the home front. I especially acknowledge the Pacific Island Coast Watchers, risking themselves to protect their homes, families, and the wider region. The Pacific Coast Watchers are the unsung heroes of New Zealand's World War II effort. From tin huts on remote islands across the South Pacific, they would keep a watch out for ships and aircrafts, listen into radioactivity, and report back any suspicious activity to the intelligence headquarters back in New Zealand. The Pacific Coast Watchers were key in defending Japan against reaching New Zealand shores. But this contribution has only just been acknowledged by the government. However, the New Zealand European Coast Watchers contribution was formally recognised by the NZDF in 2012. British and colonial troops were pressed into service to protect Malaya's rubber plantations and tin mines from the raids of the guerrillas. It was a kind of war. It was very hard to find a way whether 
You can fight like a open warfare or jungle warfare. Samoan New Zealander Tangaloa John Sawlier was a member of the International 28th Commonwealth Brigade's 2nd Battalion, which participated in the Malayan Emergency. In our battalion, there were about five or six Samoan. See, I was there with three of us, the same family. They both, they both my first cousin, but they always called me a little brother. Over the 12 years of conflict in Malaya, New Zealand lost 15 soldiers, including Solia's brother, Private Toma Fesango Solia, who was awarded the New Zealand Operational Service Medal in 2003. He's my first cousin, but he always called a little brother. <laughs> he always a little brother of mine. Where I go, he follows. Nearly 3,400 New Zealand military and civilian personnel served in the Vietnam War between 1963 and 1975. New Zealand's contribution to the war was very limited compared to some of its allies, but it still triggered large anti-Vietnam War protests at home in Aotearoa. Some soldiers were spat at when they returned, and they were never formally recognised by the Crown until 2008, over 30 years after the war had finished. The Crown extends to New Zealand Vietnam veterans and their families an apology for the manner in which their loyal service in the name of New Zealand was not recognised as it should have been, when it should have been, and for inadequate support extended to them and their families after their return home from the conflict. After the Vietnam War, New Zealand's Defence Force presence globally started to move towards peacekeeping and aid response. to deploy 1993 to um, Iraq, serving with the Chemical Destruction Group um, with the, um, the United Nations. Uh, we had a team of about 30 um, international biohazards destruction uh, qualified personnel yeah, breaking down and destroying all those weapons of mass destruction. Major Kerry Talauta enlisted in 1987, following in the footsteps of his Nguyen great-grandfather, Private Talauta, and Māori grandfather Pipi Marunui, who both served in World War I. Iraq was his first major international assignment. New Zealand's involvement in Iraq stretches back to the early 90s and largely focused on non-combat roles such as peacekeeping, humanitarian and observer missions. Similar missions were carried out in Bosnia, Somalia, Haiti, Cambodia and East Timor across the 1990s and in Afghanistan in the early 2000s. We're a service to New Zealand and um, it's an important part of our role um, and um, yeah, you, you never hear any regrets from the, the soldiers that deploy that um, yeah, it's not worthwhile, it's, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a huge contribution uh, to what we do and, and why we serve. Another area of the Defence Force that Pacific soldiers in New Zealand contributed to is the Reserve Force. I was in the part-time army, the, the Territorial Force Army, and um, I was there for 30 years. <laughs> A long time. Civilians serve as an Army or Navy Reserve, assisting in civil emergencies to operational deployments overseas. I went to Bougainville in 98, not for very long, about a month, and then I came back and I actually took a band group over there, yeah, a battalion band group, and we, we did our wartime role. In 2001, I went back to Bougainville and I ran a team site um, 
up in Booker, on the island of Booker. And I was there for about four months. Yeah, it really was great, actually. The impact of Pacific People's Service still resonates across the New Zealand Defence Force today, with people like Major Carey and Colonel Esther Harrop not only following in the footsteps of their grandfathers, but also progressing into leadership roles. We've got a, a large amount of uh, Polynesians that are um, um, employed within the combat environments, but there's also combat support um, and logistics, and where I've um, spent um, the last few years of my career. So I had a really great job when I got back from South Sudan, actually, as um, Defence Advisor Pacific, official accredited Defence Advisor for Niue, Cook Islands, and uh, Tokelau's, um, and I. Um, spent a lot of time in Samoa as well as the, their defence advisor too. So um, that role was about engagement, seeing how um, New Zealand Defence Force can assist with um, with security and defence in the, in the Pacific. I've really enjoyed my career. I'm really proud of a lot of the things I've had an opportunity to be exposed to, and um, I'm I'm um, I'm still focused on adding value to the organisation in whatever way that I can. Talk of a Pacific Islands memorial started back in 2014 when then Member of Parliament Alfred Ngaro and former Cook Islands High Commissioner to New Zealand Tiki Matapo met with members of the Cook Islands community in Wellington and formed the Cook Islands Soldiers World War I group, which is still going strong today. They were a key group behind Te Reo Hotsunui o Te Moana Nui Akiwa, designed by Pacific artist Michael Tavari. Papa Tiki was really keen to um, help us, so anything that he could do um, for our memorials, he um, supported us wholeheartedly. We felt like we'd done our job, and it was so nice to have Michael Tuffrey um, be the artist. I think without our little committee, I don't know if this would have eventuated. And it was great working with Michael, because he came on board and always kept us informed of the journey of the sculpture and uh, no no I'm, I'm really proud not of our efforts I'm just proud to where it's got to. The conch shell design is inspired by three Cook Island soldiers Solomona Isaac, Angene Angene and Tau Kupungaiti who served in World War I. They were stationed with the New Zealand Tunneling Company and the New Zealand Maori Pioneer Battalion digging out tunnels under the town of Arras in France. The tunnels were rediscovered in 1990. Years later, a conch shell from the Cook Islands was found in the tunnel system beneath the soldiers' names, which were carved into the chalk wall by Solomona and Angene, along with the Lord's Prayer. I'm just really, really grateful for everyone has actually supported this project and got the kaupapa behind it, and all the families. I, and I think it's just really important just to acknowledge them. And also actually really grateful to the judges who actually chose the story. In fact, you know, MCH and the families and everybody else who got this kaupapa and this whole narrative and this story, I'm just so gratefully thank you. That's all I can say. The Minister of Foreign Affairs and Trade, the Honourable Nanaya Mahuta, says the contribution Pacific peoples have made to Aotearoa and helping to protect the country and the region is a testament to the relationship between New Zealand and the Pacific. The importance of recognising the uh, level of contribution uh, across the Pacific uh, in the Great Wars uh, underpins a number of things. One, the importance of our relationship uh, to the Pacific, uh, to uh, the way in which we come together in times of need to be able to support one another. You know, for New Zealanders, it's probably a, uh, an opportunity to learn a little bit more about that history because it's not talked about enough. Fundamentally, the relationship to the Pacific is born out of the knowledge that New Zealand is the tainer, our Māori ancestors travelled through the Pacific to arrive here uh, and we have whakapapa connections, whanaungatanga connections and a number of common values that help us express who we are as Polynesians and what connects and binds us together. 
In more in recent times, we have huge Pacific populations that are represented here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, who make a valuable contribution to our country. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. <laughs>